All right, hi y'all. Just I'm trying out the GoPro. It has a fancy holder. We will see if this one works. So I'm gonna talk about leading strand and lagging strand synthesis here. Um, that's a topic that people were getting a little bit mixed up on. So in this case, we're gonna start out with our replication bubble. So we already have replication initiated and I'm going to ignore most of the proteins that we're using in this. I'm really just gonna focus here on DNA polymerase and primase to a lesser extent. So we're gonna be skipping helicase, single-stranded binding protein, um, topoisomerase, et cetera. So here we've got hydrogen bound together nucleotides, and here we have non-hydrogen bound together nucleotides. Just a reminder, the helicase is what's unwinding these from each other. It's melting the two strands away from each other, and the single-stranded binding protein is stabilizing that. Okay, so the fork is gonna open up in this direction, and that's just basically the direction that helicase is moving in. So that means that over time, the replication bubble is gonna get bigger and bigger. It's just going to keep on growing and growing until it meets up with another replication bubble and then the whole thing is going to stop. Now for DNA polymerase, we remember that it always works in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction, so it lays down the 5' prime end first and then the 3' prime end later. So it only can travel in one direction. It can only add on nucleotides to the OH group. It cannot, on add, it cannot add on nucleotides to a phosphate group. So when we're looking here at this origin of replication, which we're just going to stick right in the middle, so origin of replication, right in the middle, right here, DNA polymerase, adding on to primase, which I'm not drawing here, is going to be able to add in 5' prime to 3' prime in one of the directions. So let's say this is the 5' prime end, the 3' prime end. That makes this over here the 5' prime end. I'll do that in a slightly different color. 5' prime end of this strand of DNA. That makes this over here the 3' prime end. The opposite strand will be 5' prime end and 3' prime end. So when I draw this arrow, it's always going to be 5' prime is the blunt end of the arrow. 3' prime is the arrow end of the arrow. So as DNA polymerase makes this piece of DNA, it's just going to travel along the fork, and it's not going to have any trouble adding on. As the fork opens up, DNA polymerase moves in this direction, okay, and the piece just gets longer and longer. Now the same is also going to be true of this piece over here. So over here, this is the 3' prime end and the 5' prime end, so the complementary anti-parallel piece of DNA will be able to grow 5' prime to 3' prime. As the fork opens up, it can keep on growing longer and longer and longer. So in this case, we say that DNA polymerase is traveling in the same direction as helicase. And those are going to be opposite directions on the two pieces of DNA, or two different strands of DNA. The lagging strand looks a little bit different from this. Lagging strand synthesis starts out the same way as leading strand, so I'm going to draw lagging strand in green, 5' prime to 3'. Prime. Note that this arrow is in the same direction as this arrow because it's constrained by its template strand. Its template strand is 3' prime to 5', prime, so it has to be 5' prime to 3'. Prime. Same as this strand. They're getting made off of the same template, so that means that they get made in the same direction. This piece over here is going to get made in the same direction as this piece, again constrained by its template strand. It has to go in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction, meaning that it will be complementary to this original parent strand that's 3' prime to 5', prime, 3' prime to 5' prime here. So now we have started out with this here, so I'm going to just draw what we already have. And as the fork opens up though, we can't add DNA onto these blunt ends. We can only add them onto the arrow ends, the 3' prime end of our growing piece of DNA. So that means that primase has to come all the way back over here, make a little primer, and then DNA polymerase can extend off of that. Same thing for here, primase makes a little primer and DNA polymerase off of it. 
Now, at the end, DNA ligase can come and seal these nicks, but we're not worried about that just yet. So now we've got this little piece here. That's this piece here, piece number one. Piece number two here. Piece number one again here and two here. So piece number one and piece number two. And now the fork's opened up even further. So now primates can come here, make a little piece of nucleic acids. Uh, sorry, nucleic acid polymers, and then DNA polymerase can extend off of it. Same thing here, primase comes in, and polymerase can extend off of it. So this gives us piece number three. So this is our lagging strand, and we call these little pieces Okazaki fragments. The purple one is our leading strand, and it gets made continuously.